I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. Today I'm playing with my new PC. Some of you may be aware that I have a new desktop PC to munch through the video that I produce and the problem is the power supply blew up. Not only did it blow up once in the machine but when I took it out to test the machine and plugged it in it kept it blew up another three times. So now I've got a new uh, power supply on my machine and I'll just show you what's going on. It's currently going through a burn-in test here on the bench. So we're running a CPU stress testing program over here and a new power supply running against the hardware. Now what I noticed on this motherboard is there's a couple of capacitors on the motherboard that have uh, been knocked off, probably through me messing around. Um, they look a bit like this. Let's see if you can see that correctly. There you go. And what I do have is another <coughs> broken motherboard which is exactly the same type, uses the same capacitor. So what I'm going to do now is show you today how to transplant some of these components using surface mount techniques from one board to another um, in the hope that you'll never bother doing it. You don't really need to uh, try this. You should probably just buy a new motherboard, but you know, I've got the equipment, I can do it, so I'm gonna have a go. Let's see, let, I'll, uh, let's have a look. So today we're going to be desoldering two of these three capacitors. Now these are actually through hole components and you can see on the other side of the board they're actually connected to these um, pads here. The legs are very short and because we're going to be trying to preserve the legs we've got to be a bit careful with it. I've also noticed on my motherboard that the ethernet uh, isn't working properly and this board here you can see here this is where the ethernet module is. It's a bit blurry, there we go. So this by my finger here, you can see the ethernet module. I might have a go at seeing if it makes sense to be able to try to remove that and swap that over as well. Okay, so for this uh, job, you're going to need some solder flux, preferably in a tube like this, hot air blower, some solder braid, your soldering iron, and a roll of good quality solder. So first I'm going to flip the board on its back. Um, everything's moved again. Yeah, I'm going to leave the board now locked down on that. Yeah. Is blue good? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay, I'm just applying some solder onto these pads to give them a bit more, um, so they absorb the heat better. And then I'm going to put, pull on the cap gently whilst heating both pins simultaneously. There we go. So we've extracted one. We've extracted two. So these are the two caps extracted. I didn't make a note of the direction they were put in, but uh, when you look at the PCB, you'll find a square pad and a round pad. You can see how they correlate with these because I've still let got one in. The square pad correlates, uh, sorry, the round pad correlates to the part of the capacitor that's got the line. So we just need to make sure when we reinsert them, we reinsert them the right way. The first thing I'm going to show you here is these uh, damaged capacitor pads. So this is where I'm going to be replacing these old ones and these new ones. And also, I'd like to show you here, if you notice also this motherboard had an issue with Ethernet, um, it may well be down to this choke being damaged, so I'm going to replace that while I'm at it. I don't know if that will cure it or not, but I might as well as I've got a spare. Okay, let's begin. Okay, I've got the old motherboard here. I'm going to remove the pins from the old uh, broken capacitors out through the, the back. It's the same technique as removing the capacitors from the donor board. I'm just going to apply solder to it, and then I'm going to try to whip them out as soon as they've got enough heat. I'm going to actually push them through. There we go. Hmm. 
And then with a solder sucker, it's not working, is it? That one got it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the holes have been cleared, so I'm now going to repopulate the motherboard with the replacement components. So just pop those straight in. It's worth noting on this motherboard that there's actually additional um, unpopulated capacitor holes, so just make sure you choose the right ones. And all you have to do simply is hold these in with your fingers, flip the board over, and with your magical third hand, apply solder in the soldering iron. You should be able to do it with just your two hands. If you've got difficulty, you can always apply a piece of tape over the top here to keep them in position. Which I probably ought to have done. Okay. Okay, so... So something to do, just apply your flux again, and with your solder appropriately near. What I like to do is just get a blob of solder on the soldering iron, and solder in one of the legs temporarily. Okay. That will allow you to take your second hand now out from under it and then you can put a lot of effort into making sure the next pad is done properly. Okay, and once you're satisfied with that second pad being put in properly, you can go back to the first pad and make sure that your rough tack now is replaced with a decent solder joint. Done. What you do, here's a trick. Put some tissue or blue paper over the area, spray some flux cleaner on it, and then with a brush, in small circular motion, just grind that paper into the PCB. And then when you remove that, let's do another side as well, you'll have a nice clean board. <coughs> and the reason this works is because you're using the bristles to get into all the nitty gritty, you can actually do that on the surface mount components and chips in the same way without damaging them. There we go. Okay, this choke is a surface mount component, so we're not going to be able to remove that in the same way. To aid removal, as it's already damaged, I'm going to use side cutters to chop away the legs so you can see what we're dealing with here. So you've got a part of this component soldered to the motherboard with these surface mount technology. So you, again, take your flux, and with your hot air gun now you're going to have to warm the board gently. Keep the hot air moving, you don't want to concentrate it in one space because you'll scorch the PCB.
and there we have it, it just lifts off. So it's essentially a two pad, -pad device. This is the removal of the so now we're trying to remove the donor piece, we're going to take a little bit more care because we don't want to break it. Although we care a lot less about this motherboard itself, so... There we go. So I'm going to tin the pads to make sure that it's uh, got plenty of solder on. As you can see, we are observing a Jared in his native environment. <laughs> There's nothing more he loves than to tinker with CPUs and motherboards. He is now using the skill of a surgeon to insert the motherboard and its components <laughs> into the PCB. Watch as he nearly stabs it with a screwdriver. While he's doing that, we're going to prepare the power supply. Oh yes. Right, so we have our blown up power supply and we want to replace it with our good power supply, but there's a problem. The wires of the new one are a lot shorter than the wires of the old one. Now we don't need them all to be very long, but we need some of them to be very long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some wires off this one and solder them onto this one. <laughs> So I've cut the wire off the old power supply, I've chopped into the new power supply and I've stripped them all. I've applied some heat shrink onto the wires now, in, in, ready for when these joints are made. And using a multimeter I've buzzed these out and these are all at the same tension. So all the blacks are connected together at the power supply, all the yellows are connected together. So what I'm going to do is join them all together in a big bundle, a yellow bundle and a black bundle, pull the heat shrinks over them and then that will form my extension piece. Okay, so I've got my last joint, so I th just thought I'd show you. I mechanically wound the two copper ends together, then I've soldered it there, a nice big ball, and you just pull the heat shrink across, and if you've got a gas soldering iron, some people even use a lighter or hot air blower, just run it gently here. Gas soldering irons are handy because they've got an exhaust which blows out their excess hot air. This is the only thing that that's useful for. It's normally used for burning yourself. And there you have it, a nice professional splice. We can pop that in the machine now. Okay, so my PC's back together now. It's working pretty well. Uh, the downside is, We've realised that when you use all 8 cores and the GPUs are maxed out, the power supply, the new 850 watt power supply, still browns out and it shuts down. So what we've done is set in the settings for the uh, motherboard, we've reduced the maximum speed of the CPU, so we're effectively underclocking it for now. We've underclocked it to a level now that you can run the 8 cores at their maximum and the GPU all together, the, the two SLI GPUs back rather, and uh, it still doesn't uh, brown out the system. 
So in the future, I'm going to either need a second uh, power supply for the graphics cards or a thousand watt, a one kilowatt power supply to run this beast. Um, at the moment, I don't have the uh, money for that. So let's see how we get on with this and upgrade it in the future. Thanks for watching.